and welcome to the third episode of this YouTube series about motivation and practice. And as I've said before, these are a little different. I'm not playing guitar in these like traditional lessons. I'm trying to impart some of my ideas uh, to you in the hope that it um, gives you some inspiration. This episode is how to find your voice on the guitar. Finding your voice on an instrument, uh, for some, can be a lifelong quest. Guitar players that you love usually have a distinct tone that, as we discussed in episode two, and in my opinion, comes predominantly from the fingers and from the heart. So if a guitar player inspires you, study some of their work as part of your journey to find your own voice. But you don't want to study just one player. This is really, really important, and I've been guilty of this myself, you know. Um, study some of what you like about that player, but make sure you go off and study lots of other people as well. The world does not need another Stevie Ray Vaughan clone, okay? Um, developing your voice on the instrument is going to make you a more accomplished musician, but also one that has their own style. Um, and so I want to give you some suggestions about how you can do that. First one, and this is a big one, is work on your rhythm. Okay, now whether that means playing 16th notes or 8th notes with a metronome, uh, embracing the cage system, I have some courses on that, um, you know, uh, playing with other musicians as much as possible, playing with a good drummer, super important. Uh, you know, whatever you do, all of the above, Work on your rhythm, and this is going to build your confidence as a player. Um, when you become a better rhythm player, it affects everything you do on the instrument. You know, it, it automatically makes you a better lead player. I'll give you an example. I spent a year playing rhythm in a uh, soul funk band, um, and when I when I joined that band, my right hand, you know, rhythm playing was so so. Um, but after playing those songs for a year. Um, just really having to lock in with the drummer and the bass player and really appreciate the pocket and the groove, I, I felt like my rhythm playing improved a lot and it seemed to you know, affect everything that I did on the guitar. Um, as an aside here, what, what, one funny moment was uh, when we were coming to the end of the rehearsals and the band leader said, now we're going to work on our dance steps and I laughed out loud and I looked around the rehearsal and all the other people in the band were not laughing I realized he was actually serious. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my point being that, that tightening up your rhythm playing um, will give you more confidence, you know, and part of finding your voice on the instrument is being confident. You need, you need confidence to improve your overall technique and find your own voice. All right, here's another one. Listen to everything, and I do mean everything, right? Try to listen and learn from different styles of music, even if they're not your favorite. I know that's difficult sometimes, right? I know we have those five albums that we just want to go back to for 40 years, but you can still do that, but just try to bring some other elements of different music in as well. The more diverse genres you're exposed to, the more you are going to bring elements of them back into your favorite musical styles that you like to play. And that's going to define personality in your playing, all right? Um, you know, if you're, if you're a metal player and you've never really listened to country, give it a, give it a spin. You know, maybe a little chicken picking could work in, in, in the metal, you know, or vice versa, right? Um, so as well as defining a personality in your playing from taking elements of different styles, this also helps remove the idea of competition from your mind. You know, I talked about this in episode one, right? Who's the best guitarist, yeah? Um, once you realize that you can appreciate something from all different genres of, of players, it's absolutely pointless to compare them or compare yourself to them, okay? So it's very helpful for that as well. Iconic guitarists usually ones you think of with a unique voice on the instrument have, it seems like, one or two elements, or maybe more, but, but usually a couple of elements that define their personality on the instrument. You know, that's become their signature. Let's think about that for a second. B.B. King, vibrato, right? That singing vibrato that he had. Um, Eddie Van Halen, two-handed tapping. Um, Yngwie Malmsteen, 
the neoclassical fast uh, picked arpeggios. Um, Where's Montgomery? Use of octaves in soloing. You know, Andy Summers, the the sus two and add nine chords with the chorus. Albert Lee, you know, there's major pentatonic, fast, clean, picked lines, and so on and so on. Right. So, um, how do you identify your signature? You know, what are the what are the one or two things you're going to do on the instrument that's going to make people go, oh, that's you? Um, think about it like this: What would you like to be able to do on the instrument? that at the moment you cannot do, or maybe you can do a little bit, but you don't feel confident about it. You know, pick one thing and focus on it. Borrow from the masters, but bring your own identity to whatever that thing is. And that's gonna make you more unique and develop your voice. Uh, vibrato is an excellent place to start because it literally <laughs> defines your voice on the instrument, right? Vibrato is like the human voice, the singing quality of the notes. So um, think about the type of vibrato you like. Again, this is subjective. You know, people like all kinds of different vibratos, and it's different in different genres of music as well. You know, do you like a, a bluesy vibrato or a classical vibrato, or a wide rock vibrato? Um, there's a huge range, right? So listen to a range of different players from different genres, hear their vibrato. Um, you know, to, to develop your own, play a note and add vibrato. Um, but make sure you keep the note in tune and do it slowly, you know. Um, that way you can avoid the, the guitar center vibrato. Uh, you know, when you're walking through guitar center and you hear somebody doing that manic vibrato and you immediately want to drop your coffee and run, you know, go slow at first with vibrato and keep it smooth, keep the note in tune. Be aware of your intonation. That's, that's going to lead to a more pleasing vibrato, you know. Um, put all of your energy and attention into your vibrato for as long as it takes, okay? Every time you pick up the guitar, you know, hold that one note. Do the same note with different fingers. Try and get it to sound equal. Try to get it smooth and balanced sounding, okay? Um, another example would be arpeggios. You know, now when, when you say the word arpeggio to a guitar player, they have a different reaction to what that means. Is that is that like a swung jazz arpeggio with chromatic notes added? Is it a, a neoclassical sweeping kind of thing? You know, um, is it more like picking out chord tones with effects? It's all of those things, right? So if you want to develop arpeggios as part of your unique signature, focus in on them, really study them, you know, make them part of your daily practice, not just, oh, I play a few arpeggios and then go off and do something else, you know. Relate them to chord voicings, um, you know, improvise with them over songs, make them part of everything you do, and you'll probably find your way of expressing arpeggios will become part of your voice on the instrument. Now, let me add this as well. For years, um, you know, I felt like I should be able to play a traditional jazz style, um, and it just didn't work, you know. I think because deep down, even though I do love jazz, um, my passion for playing stemmed from rock guitar and its many offshoots, you know, and I love the harmony of jazz, but I love the tone of rock, you know, and so um, there's nothing more exciting for me personally than, than playing with a rock tone and, you know, hearing a note go to feedback. I mean, that's just, that's always going to do it for me, right? And, and playing, uh, you know, playing octaves with a nice clean tone just doesn't do it the same way for me personally. Now, there are so many amazing, accomplished, traditional jazz players out there that it would be pointless for me to try to make that part of my identity if, if I didn't feel it, right? You've got to feel it. So there's a certain element of swimming against the tide to developing your own unique sound on the instrument. You know, perhaps you, you find something you really like and maybe your bandmates are kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird, you know, but I say, Go with it. Follow your instinct. You know, it's like it, it, it's completely subjective anyway, right? And, and, you know, I'm sure many of these great players that we talk about, when they first came out with their, their various signature sounds, people probably, you know, were critical of it. So the point being, um, it's okay to swim against the tide. Just watch out for the rocks. All right, so uh, to wrap up, um, Developing your voice on the instrument is going to make you a much more accomplished musician, more confident, and obviously somebody that has their own style. 
exaggerate your signatures so they can become your identity. All right. And um, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, I welcome comments, suggestions for upcoming topics. Please subscribe. And if you haven't watched the previous episodes or the episodes that are coming up, please do so. All right. Thanks a lot. Go play your guitar and go develop your voice on the instrument.